Yes, sir. And I think his word is exact. Yes, sir. And I believe that Jesus used the statement in his teachings. He said, let your conversation be yea, yea, and nay, nay. And whatsoever is more than this cometh of evil. In other words, you can get too wide a latitude. I can spread my margin too much and think it's okay because I feel it's okay. God must feel it's okay. Because I get along with it, God must get along with it. And I think that attitude has prevailed more and more in the last few years of the church and it's working and it's caused, I think, God to withdraw from us. Uh, uh, I, uh, how, how much do we sanctify our worship when we enter into worship? Well, it's that God's not too concerned about us by, by, by refusing to let um, too much chatter go on where we're sitting um, while we're worshiping. By bringing foreign objects in to worship that detracts our attention from God. Uh, by, by lifting the holiness, the howling, the moment of praise, by uh, letting our mind be steadfast on the Holy Spirit, on what God is saying. How much closer could we come in the exactness of not having any other gods? How much could we pare down here? I'm asking myself, out of my life, that may be. And finally God will have, like he took that little brass God, and I've never seen it, and I've never bought another one. That was the last one I ever bought of any kind of image or graven image or a replica or statue that was related in any way to God. Uh, you know, they called it a God. Uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Yes, sir. That's Do we make gods me. out of people? I believe we have. In my lifetime in the church, I believe I have seen people make gods out of gifted ministers, gifted uh, songwriters, gifted singers. And they hallowed them. If, if they fell, they fell. If they gave up, they would give up. Whole churches have been affected by that. Whole congregations have been affected by that. The movements have been affected by that. The movement I am intimately a part of and my roots are have been affected by that one area more than any other area that I can think of. I know that's been affected by other sins. And some of you that have been with me in the journey of faith down through the years, I, I think you would say amen to that, that, uh, that the church has been affected by having and making gods out of mortal beings. They can't do it. You can't do it. That's why I'm totally against uh, anybody being infallible in any office on the earth outside of Christ. Christ is the only infallible, infallible one in the office he occupies. He's the only one. And his father, of course, has never been touched by mortal flesh. In fact, Jesus said, no man has seen God at any time. That's how hallowed he is. That's how sanctified he is and set apart. So thou shalt have uh, no other gods uh, before me. And um, he said, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven uh, images, um, image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Well, I read that, didn't I? Let's go on down. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, verse 5, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, uh, for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that 
hate me. Now the word hate here is translated in another transliteration of the scripture, those that despise and turn away from me. Those that despise and turn away from me. Uh, we used the King James as hate, but those that despise and turn away from me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. <clears throat> Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And I believe that stretches beyond the normal, common <clears throat> interpretation <clears throat> of the Christian church in some quarters that that is just vile cursing, uh, what we term curse words. Uh, it, it, it goes beyond that. Uh, that. That could not have been the full meaning of mm -hmm. taking the name of the Lord God in vain, uh, though that is vulgarity, that's speech. And if a person is what we say is cursing, uh, uh, that, that, that certainly is sin. That the God dishonors that. That's vulgarity, obscenity. That's so. That's flesh. God despises flesh. But I think that He's saying here that anything that you do, and the things which is listed above, that Moses had just received from God, uh, if you do these things and you worship me, you worship me. You're taking my name in vain. See, if, if you have another God, if you if you have other gods before me, you're taking my name in vain. Now, vulgarity of speech is cursing, uh, but it goes beyond that in taking the name yes. of the Lord in vain. Of yes. uh, I, I take His name. I am a name bearer of Jesus Christ. I bear his name. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe in whatever I'm doing, in word or in deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Now, if I believe that, and then I have other gods before him, or I make graven images, or I bow down before them, or I have iniquity in my spirit, I am taking the name that I bear, the name of Jesus, the family name, in heaven and in earth. I'm bearing that in vain. I'm taking that in vain. Yes. It isn't doing me any good. I'm not in his name if I'm serving another God, if I'm worshiping another God or having a graven image. I'm just taking the name of, of the Lord in vain. And uh, for the Lord will not hold him so. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And that's, that's going to be a matter of discussion as we go. Uh, they were pertaining uh, the Jewish Saturday, uh, the calendar day Saturday was their actual calendar day of the Sabbath day. The mm -hmm. uh, Sunday is the Roman day of the first day of the week. Uh, we... Uh, whole generally that Sunday is a Sabbath day. It really isn't, but it, not, not in the literal, not in the calendar Sabbath. Uh, the Adventist people have the literal day right, the Sabbath Saturday. They will not uh, do anything on Saturday. They'll light a fire, they won't cook a meal. Uh, strict Orthodox Adventists will not um, because they have the day right by the calendar it, as the Jewish people do. But what they don't do is transfer it into the new covenant and understand the term Sabbath and Sabbath day and how we as Christians keep the Sabbath day and make it holy instead of one day, just one day, and, and that's the total Sabbath. We as children of God and New Testament believers and people who have the truth in their heart, we know that Paul settles this issue in Romans 14. And we'll get into that 
in a moment, uh, but uh, maybe a little bit more. But you see, uh, my Sabbath, day of rest, Sabbath means day of rest. And my Sabbath, uh, the Jewish had their Sabbath on the, the seventh day, which was Saturday. Uh, the, the Sabbath day is spoken of in prophecy as being the one millennium day. 1,000 years. That's how long that day is. See, the millennium day is 1,000 years. That is to be the Sabbath day. The seventh day. And that's the day of rest when Christ will reign and rule on the earth. So that's the Sabbath day. Uh, my Sabbath day is the day of rest that I entered into when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and then every part of my rest that I keep, and I don't <clears throat> sin, I don't violate God's word, I don't light a fire, I don't cook up something of my own ingenuity, my carnal mind does not overrule my spiritual mind, that is Sabbath, that's rest. Uh, that, that's the day of my rest. If I can enter into that, I am keeping my Sabbath. Whether it's Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, I am observing my Sabbath and keeping it holy unto the Lord. Now, if I can spend Sunday all day, as the nation generally gives, uh, it used to, doesn't now, give all, all the workforce Sunday to observe the Sabbath. Uh, they don't do that now. But if we do that on Sunday, we do worship on Sunday, because the, generally still the, 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 the whole of the population still is given Sunday. So the church takes advantage and comes together on Sunday. That is our day of Sabbath. But that's not the spiritual Sabbath. That's a calendar day if we keep it. And we're keeping our Sabbath, our day of rest, in our spirit. You break the Sabbath in your spirit. And you can break it on Monday, or Tuesday, or Wednesday, or Thursday, or Friday, or Saturday, or Sunday. You can, you can, you can break the Sabbath. You can uh, uh, not keep the Sabbath holy. Your Sabbath is your rest when you receive Christ in you. The hope of glory. That's your creation day. That's your new birth day. That's your beginning day of new life. And so Israel was told, you keep the Sabbath day holy. That was literally the calendar day of Saturday under their calendar, under their time. Now, they were to keep it holy because that was the day he observed certain feasts and uh, parts of keeping the law. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, pardon me, somebody? Mm -hmm. and, and they still do. They still do. Uh, they still observe that. But if you have more, and you undoubtedly do, because I, I know that when this is taught this way, it stirs the mind, and everybody doesn't see it <coughs> and understand it. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. It was to Israel. And it, thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughters, thy uh, manservants, nor thy maidservants, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days, and he explains why, and he notes the seventh day is the rest day, the Sabbath day. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea and all then. And, and, and them in, and rested the seventh uh, day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. And it was hallowed in the covenant of Israel, the literal calendar day, the seventh day. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Is that still valid today in our mixed up society we're living in? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. 
Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Uh, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So in this teaching that God gave Moses, we call the Ten Commandments, Israel added 603 others to try to keep the ten in the Levitical priesthood. Uh, but these are the ten original statements God made in a covenant that he gave to Moses, the law of Moses. My answer to them being valid is every one of them is valid today. Yes, it is. Every one of them is still practical application of truth and every one of them can be kept to the nth degree without sin involved in it. They are still holy, they are still part of the song of Moses and of the Lamb. That's part of the old covenant. But Jesus came and said, I didn't come to destroy it. I came to set an example and fulfill it. Sister Lorraine. The Lord's Prayer pretty well takes care of that. The Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer in, in, uh, in the New Testament, Matthew. Yeah. Yes. This day. Yes. yes. Give us this day. And that's our Sabbath day, isn't it? The day of rest. Give us this day. Every day. Every day is the Sabbath day when you enter into your rest. In the spiritual covenant, in the application of the spiritual covenant. Now, the reason that I don't keep just Saturday, which Israel kept on the calendar day, is you look at, uh, by the time that Paul wrote the letter to the Roman church, he already was showing that they had made a God out of the Sabbath day, the literal day, and he was showing how that you keep the Sabbath day spiritually and you do not condemn the person that's keeping the literal day. On the other hand, the person keeping the literal day should not condemn you if you're observing another day. Uh, those that keep the Sabbath, and I'll get Eric over here, those that keep the Sabbath on, I don't condemn the Adventists. I can worship with them. They're my brothers and sisters. But they cannot worship with me. They cannot enter the place I worship because it becomes, they violate, and I become a heathen temple on Sunday because they feel that they're their day, Saturday, and it has become a statue of limitation to them. Now, not to me. I could worship on their uh, on their day and feel very good about being there on Saturday. I have done that at Adventist Church. I'm using that because this is concerning uh, the Sabbath day here. Uh, so, anyway, I'll get Eric's question before I go any further. Well, it's not really a question. Or comment. As you, as you were speaking and teaching about the Sabbath, two things came up in my mind. Jesus said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Yes. And then he said, come to me all you are weary and I will give you rest. Right. Well, we get, we're supposed to rest on the Sabbath. And when we go to Jesus, he gives us rest. So. Right. <laughs> Very good. I mean, like, Very good. He gives us, come unto me all of you that labor. Mm -hmm. And they labored under the Sabbath. They, they would condemn each other for breaking the Sabbath. Uh, and they became very law-given on the Sabbath. Uh, and that was not, uh, uh, that was contrary to the love of Christ, the love of brother for brother. Uh, let me give you a scripture pertaining to the word rest, because it's very vital on your, in Isaiah, and many of you know it, you're already familiar with it, but in Isaiah, uh, the 28th uh, chapter, isn't it? Uh, yes, I believe it is. Uh, the 28th chapter. 
Um, he speaks of, um, yes, uh, verse 10. Uh, well, not verse 9. Let's take verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. That's who's going to understand knowledge. And he's going to teach them doctrine. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. That means every statue of God's word must fit with the next precept. That's what he's saying. Precept must be upon precept. I cannot take one part of his word and let it double cross or contradict the next precept. That's what he's saying. Precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Can't have one line crooked and the next line straight of God's word. God's word mm -hmm. dovetails. God's word fit. Every bit of it agrees. God's word does not contradict. Mm -hmm. Nowhere. So it must be precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Hear a little from this part of the law, this part of grace, this part of the old, this part of the new, and there a little. For prophetic now, Isaiah's prophetic, for with stammering lips and other tongue will I speak unto this people, Israel. And he was prophesying of the day of Pentecost. That was a direct prophecy concerning the day of Pentecost in the second chapter of Acts. And note this, stammering lips when the Holy Ghost comes upon a person is part of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. It is part of it. The Holy Ghost is upon a person with stammering lips. It enters <coughs> into them with other tongues. It's there at the door, stammering lips, enters into them with other tongues. For with stammering lips and other tongues. In other words, it's not your lips. The Holy Spirit is a control of your mouth. Control. And it's the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit speaks and other tongues, language from God. And you have a verification, identification of the Holy Spirit. Then that kind of, and what is this now? L look at what Isaiah says next. <clears throat> Excuse me. To whom he said, this is the rest. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. To whom he said, this is the rest. Rest. Rest is opposite of labor. Rest is when you cease and there's nothing you're doing. Rest is when it's God's work and not yours. You know? And this is the rest. What is? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. And this is God taking over and you declining. God assuming control and you're not. This is the rest with you may cause the weary to rest. And this is a refreshing. So this is your Sabbath. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is your Sabbath. When it comes into you, it is your rest. It is your day of rest. It's your time of rest. And though Christians violate the Sabbath by not resting, but yet if they will, and will obey the commandment of God, they can enter into their rest. Um, what was it Paul said in Hebrews? Is it, uh, I want to say four, I may be wrong. Uh, one of those scriptures he gives, there remaineth therefore a rest unto the people of God. But you can't rest outside of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the only thing that controls the inner man in you that controls the outer man in you. And without the Holy Spirit controlling the inner man, Christ, then 
the outer man will not be controlled. So the only time I rest is when the Holy Spirit is upon me, when the Holy Spirit is working through me, when the Holy Spirit is guiding me and leading me. Then I'm not violating my Sabbath. Hallelujah. I'm keeping my Sabbath. And uh, I, when the Holy Spirit is in control, I'm keeping my Sabbath then. <coughs> And, and I cease. There remains therefore a rest of the people of God. And the next verse is, <coughs> For he that has entered into his rest, he also <coughs> has ceased, has ceased from his own works, as God did from him. See, Christ, God stopped his work and ended his work on the seventh day and ceased from working. And God will keep the Sabbath, Jehovah God will. He will not work on the seventh day, the millennial day. God will keep the Sabbath. He will not work. He does all of his work in 6,000 years, prophetic years. And when the seventh day comes, the day of the millennium, following the advent of Christ, as I said here Sunday, then the seventh day there will be no work from God, and Christ will command that the earth be at rest okay. and keep the Sabbath. <coughs> All you see, Christ will command that, and they will keep the Sabbath day because they will not break, break or violate the Sabbath, because the Sabbath day is the day of holiness and righteousness unto God. Um, okay, um, any, any, any questions or comments up to this <coughs> point now that we can uh, involve the class in, or that you may be a little, I'm wondering uh, if, just, I don't know, you may have a question. In Paul Hebrews, speak. isn't he talking about the rest, that it's like a, uh, Faith obtained. It changed from being a rest of God completed work to <coughs> that's what I got in three eighteen. Who didn't enter into the rest? It says also we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. They had no faith. Right. That's what it says, you know, in three nineteen. Therefore the promise of entering his rest still stands. Mm -hmm. Let us be careful that none of be found falling short of it. But that's like a, a faith, like, you know, that, that we're going to attain that through faith, that rest. By faith. Yes, sir. That's the only way you can enter into that rest. But that's the rest, right? Is having obtained the promise of, of, of that faith, that's what we rest on in that, that promise obtained. Yes. Is that our, not our rest? That's our rest. It's not like a rest where we say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to do anything. To no, that. no. And see, this is again where the um, dear, precious, wonderful Adventist people, along with others, uh, I'm not persecuting them. They're some of the most wonderful people I've ever met as in the Adventist faith and loves God. They're people of God. They're children of God. Mm -hmm. but, but they, again, like many people do, they're not the only ones that does this. They, they, they make uh, an idol, and they don't realize they're making an idol because they persecute and prosecute anyone that just violates, say, if they light their fire in their kitchen to cook a meal from sundown Friday till sundown Sunday night. <coughs> they're not to light that fire because Israel was not to light a fire, and that was keeping... The Sabbath, uh, they don't do any work, and they will not work from that time period because that's uh, so. That that they're, they're taking that point and thinking that's rest. That's the rest. No, the new covenant is rest in your spirit, rest in your labor of flesh, rest from the fleshly works, abstain from the appearance of evil, uh, the participation in evil, sin. Uh, let rest, just take rest in your Sabbath. Uh, let every day be holy unto the Lord. Uh, let the keep from 
working yourself. Let God work out the problem uh, that you're wrestling with and you're almost perhaps losing your, your faith in God over. Uh, let him have it. Let him, let him have it. Uh, as, as, as hard as it would be, I must let God take and mix the word with faith in me and rest in my faith and, and know that, that, it, that it's not the literal because I pick up a hammer and I nail a board or because I, I rake the yard or because uh, my wife would cook a meal uh, on that literal day. We're not violating the Sabbath because that's, that's the natural side. That's the material side. And that was done away with when Christ fulfill the law just like offering a lamb for my sins or a, a, a sacrifice for my sins. Christ fulfilled that. Mm -hmm. Fulfill that. So I'm not going to literally try to work out my salvation with literal things, natural things, materialistic, <laughs> things that I do or I don't do uh, that would not involve sin. Uh, now, that, that's right, Brother Carter. So, uh, any other comments or, or questions? Um, I'm of the opinion that Christ um, came to tell them what the rest actually was. <coughs> he, he tried to take them from the Old Testament way of thinking into the New by offering himself <coughs> as that peace. With every time we think of, I try to tell this to some of my friends who are overly worried, and I wonder if they have even the faith of a mustard seed, that they cannot condition themselves to hand over even the very thought that they're controlling in their brain and just take rest in Christ, that there really is a true divine spiritual power that can give us this peace from our thoughts. Not Absolutely so. Absolutely so. If we can just rest in the Lord with even the faith of a mustard seed, the rest that we find is so serene. Yes. So refreshing. Yes. And it comes not just on the Sabbath. Absolutely it comes at so. any moment when yeah, you yes. deliver yourself over to the Lord. Say. You say, Thank oh, you, God. Lord. Oh, help me, Lord. Thank you. Um, it's not a day. Deliver us. Bless us. The word yoke um, in Matthew 11, 28, uh, isn't it? 29. 30. At 30. He said, um, Come unto me, all of you that labor and are heavy laden, and take my yoke upon you. Yeah. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I uh, see, I'm meek and lowly and heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Take my yoke upon you. And we know oxen, which is a form of labor, are yoked together. And Christ knew they were yoked to the law. Mm -hmm. See, they were yoked to the law. They were laboring with the law. Mm -hmm. The law and them, Israel. And they were yoked together. And he wanted them to take his yoke and let him be fellow yoked with them, yoke servant with them. Take my yoke upon you. Uh, be removed from the law. Brother Ernest. Uh, their law made it so strict. It was hard for anybody that couldn't walk so far on the Sabbath. On the Sabbath day you could not. And uh, it made it so hard. So when Jesus came, he said to fulfill the law, he wasn't going to destroy it, but he's going to destroy the part that's man-made. <coughs> Them laws are man-made. Mm -hmm. 603 additional commandments to try to keep these 10 right. is what Israel had to wade through to fulfill the righteousness that was in the law. And when two scriptures, Jesus said, upon these hang all the law and prophets. Uh -huh. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. 